the Council on Aging. Uh, today is Thursday, January 19th, 2020. Um, I would like to just make a short statement before the public speaks, and I'd ask you to please um, give us as much constructive criticism and we will we're, we're being as respectful as we can and we ask for your respect as well in your sharing of what you'd like us to do we also invite you to stay for the entire meeting because we do have things that have been resolved since the last meeting and you would get to hear it if you stay you won't hear it unless you see read the meeting i mean watch the meeting or read the minutes the next time so thank you okay Okay, so let's start with the public session. And the first person on the list is Peter Jones. Good afternoon, I'm Peter Jones. I live in Florence. Oh, three minutes, Peter. There was a uh, partnership with Triad a number of years ago, which worked out pretty well. They put out street signs with people's uh, house numbers on them for emergency responders to use, but many seniors live alone. And I noticed the commercial buildings, including this one, each have a Knox box at the front door with a key that the fire department or the ambulance service or the police can open if it became necessary to enter the premises without breaking down the door. These are available for residences um, I don't know how much they cost, but the fire department has to install them. And I'm wondering how to um, how to move a project like that forward so that those of us who'd like to have that facility can have it. Thank you, Peter. And I, I want to just remind people that we're not able to respond to your questions, but we'll take them under advisement and we'll have something probably by next meeting. Thank you. Next person on the list is Elaine Williams. Good afternoon. Um, first, I'd like to apologize for not coming to more meetings, um, but I do want to uh, question. We had books, uh, paperback books that we used to sell per quarter, hardcover a little bit more. And I under, my understanding is that it raised between four and five thousand dollars every year. And I know myself as volunteering, I used to see people come in and buy bag loads. It was a great deal. People would also donate books, which I know can get overwhelming, but we could also start, I wish it hope we could start it again with the sale of books, um, taking as many as we can and stopping when we can't take them. We don't have to store them. Um, if they're moldy, we throw them out. That's what I was told why it stopped, because they were moldy. But you know what? People on fixed incomes and people who like to read, myself, I'll go through two or three books in a month. To buy new books each time is outrageous. To buy them for a quarter is delightful. Um, and I would hope that the uh, center would consider bringing back people back books. Thank you. Thank you. The next person is Ron Virgo. Yep. Um, I mean, I don't have too much to say because I'm not sure exactly what the gender kind of thing is here. Um, but I was just waiting to see what was going to be brought up, and I don't know if we can do if we can respond to, to that rather than my speaking now. Which um, yeah, I'm sorry, you're not able to respond to our once our meeting gets going. So, uh, but uh, you you can always speak to us through the suggestion box or making you know having a meeting with one of the staff okay well, uh, uh, all right then aside from that then i don't I, i'd like to see whatever might come out of this meeting uh, a lot of this stuff you know might be some rules or rules and regulations coming up and i was just wondering if that's all going to be like in, in writing and we get a copy of it and that, that kind of stuff okay well, thank you kim lambert I'm Kimberly Lambert. I live in Northampton. Um, I passed out some information for folks on, on uh, phone numbers and websites to look at to do some more senior advocacy for yourself and, and to stay informed. Um, 
There are no minutes posted for the 1230 subcommittee meeting on guidelines. The agenda was only posted four days prior to that meeting on 1226. We'd like to see those posted sooner. So no public, there was not enough public notice. There's no video recording of the December 12th meeting or the December 30th meeting on the city website. And those should be up before today's meeting. Please be age friendly and request that council and aging meetings be posted in advance on the front door as many seniors do not use the internet and can't find them online. Reports from citizens having trouble getting rides to medical appointments. I've heard from somebody that they are having trouble getting rides to medical appointments and that they have a lot of medical appointments. Is this an age-friendly outcome? Mary Laskowski, I'm sure people read the letter about that wonderful volunteer, that wonderful woman. Reports from volunteers of poor and unfair treatment keep coming in. Excessive discipline by Marie for minor foibles or for taking initiative seem to continue. This is not an age-friendly approach to encouraging input from volunteers. Is it age-friendly to have too many rules, so many policies, and regulations galore? I call on the Council of Aging on Aging to again advise the director and appeal to the mayor to dial back, retreat, hold off, on this fascination and penchant for lauding rules, laws, and guidelines over the senior citizens of this city. The Council on Aging members must direct, as you have done November 14th, December 5th, 30 and seconds. December 12th, Ms. Westberg to prioritize and redirect your focus on relationship building, getting to know the seniors of Northampton, and establishing real ways to include seniors to be more age-friendly. Drop the guidelines now and consider revisiting the need after the above stated goals have been met. Thank you, Chair. Any answer? Answer? That's me. I'd like to make sure that when you do review the guidelines today, after they've been adjusted accordingly from the meeting on Monday, that a copies of them do go out to the desk for the seniors to evaluate and to make comments on and to review. And also, and also that we have the opportunity that you put something in there for anyone who has a disagreement with the volunteers or the staff or the way things are run here they have an avenue to follow as well as the staff and volunteers have an avenue of complaint that the sole purpose the sole person to go to if you have a problem with somebody cannot be the director there's got to be somebody else a group of people and you well know that marie you're making faces but that it's true if i go to you because i got a problem okay, with you we need it, we need it can't, stop, please. Please. yeah well tell her to stop making faces that's disrespectful <laughs> Oh, she's not making faces. Uh, yes, she you're is. You're not looking at her. At her so I you're not you looking at her. She's looking at me, yeah, and I'm well, looking at her. I ask you to be respectful. Of respectful so story. if if we if we have an avenue to go to, rather than the person who we may have a complaint about, can't be the final say. Okay, thank you. Next person is um, is it Gloria Parker? Is that is that right? Okay, sorry. Uh, I was one of the old seniors that was here originally when this building was built. So I see a lot of changes here, and some are not not too happy with. Like like you said, like she said, the books were money made for this organization, and people could, you know, if you like you said, on low income. We'll go buy a book for 25 cents, read it, free it back, somebody else will buy it. And also Mary's Bistro. That was another money maker for the for, for this organization. 
and you know, like I said, you run low income and you'll we'll see a ball of yarn for 10 cents, buy it, you know? So okay, why did you make a mistake? Stuff? Mary's Bistro was the restaurant? No, I'm so, sorry, I mean the, the little Mary's cake. Jingle, uh, okay. So why take stuff away from the seniors that are on low income and enjoy, enjoy these things? And it's not a business, it's a, a place for people to come and have fun and enjoy themselves. Okay, thank you, Gloria. Okay, is, is there anybody else who didn't sign up that wants to speak? All right, so we'll go on with the meeting now. Thank you, everyone. Okay. So, the the review of the minutes for December 12th, I asked the members to look them over and tell me if there are any changes that need to be done. The only one I see is the time of today's meeting, which says 5.09 at the end of the thing, so that needs to be changed. <laughs> and then one other thing, maybe. Anybody else have any changes before we... What time do you change to? 3.30. See the very end, it says the next meeting is at 5 oh. night. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there's a mistake here under annual appeal. Um, so I think there were two things mixed together here. It says, um, I stated that people will have the option to choose how donations are spent through surveys and assessment of collected data. Um, so the annual appeal is going to go out. Uh, with the census and people have a choice whether they want their donation to go to the financial aid fund or if they want it to go towards programming I mean in the past it was just it just was a you just get money and it goes to whatever um, in the gift fund so um, I think that the, the part about surveys and assessments is is, is something is it addressed to something else yeah. so that i would just take that out okay. any other changes that people see deborah i just wanted to request under announcements that uh because not everyone knows what cbi is i may have said cbi but if it's okay if we spell it out to say congregation the name is real Okay. And people, and also we can say that people don't have to live in the Valley of Jewish or consider themselves a senior to participate. That it's open to the public. Okay. All right, so hearing no other adjustments, I'd like to entertain a motion to accept the minutes. Jenna, Cindy, second by, who wants a second? I'll second. Deborah, all those in favor? Opposed? Sustain? Anyone? Uh, okay. Sorry. It's the next step. Okay. All those in favor, and we got that. Okay, so I, it passes. I think I didn't hear everybody say I, but so it passes. <laughs> I don't say hear unanimously. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any announcements? Okay. So we're going to go right to the director's report. Um, so I, I wanted to respond to some of the feedback from the council about um, some of the previous complaints and some of the solutions that were suggested. And um, so I've sort of headed this by um, topic. Um, so under communication, Cindy, Jean, Robert, and Casey all suggested various things within this um Excuse so me. you can't uh, some of the people can't hear you back you can just talk a little bit longer please oh yeah you know, try trying to you. talk Thank you. um so for the coffee hour i'm going to continue doing that monthly um i i i wish i had time more time to do it more often but i really um right now I've, i'm trying to address a lot of things and so i am um, also trying to spend more time mingling with patrons and uh, during the day so I um, I am trying to talk to people in the lobby as much as I can um, and the front desk um, um, we are we're going to be starting a uh, focus group um, with 
patrons and council members um, to work on how to improve on the welcoming app to make this a more welcoming atmosphere i know that people are missing some things and that also have some ideas about what might be implemented um like a greeter um and things like that so um, jay will be sort of um compiling sort of the cross section of members of the council um i mean the senior center um so that we have the voices of all the different groups here um and some of you know a couple of council members um to kind of have some conversations about the ideas that have come up and maybe ways that we can improve on making this place feel more friendly and welcoming um, we are looking for greeters um you know there have been that have been tried in the past and that is um would require quite a few hours so we would need probably several if not more people to help with that task um, um, you know, I, I know people know, maybe have noticed that we cut out a notch in the reception desk on the side so that we have a volunteer sit there um, so that when you do come in the back entrance this way that there is someone sitting there that you can speak with if you don't know where to go um, or if you don't need to stand in line for other kinds of things at the other opening. Um, for the book sale and the um, um, that we've dismantled. Um, I've been talking to Forbes Library. Um, they get a lot of books and they go through them and they have volunteers that do all that kind of work and make sure that books aren't moldy or dirty. And um, I am concerned about bringing in um, the mold because it is a health concern. Um, I actually have a friend whose father died from a rare mold from books. And so I really don't want to bring those into this environment, but since the library is already kind of processing books, they're willing to give us as many books as we want um, for kind of a book exchange. So take a book, leave a book kind of thing. Um, and we would just make sure that people understood that um, the books that they were leaving for other people to take, that they should be in good condition. Um, so we haven't yet um, identified where that would be, but I have also talked to the librarians, um, and they are also willing to have a section in the, the lending library that is for sort of new arrivals, so that people know what's new in the collection and they don't have to sift through everything to, to find that. But there are, there are new things coming into the library all the time. Um, the visitor policy, you know, there have been, people have been asking about what is the visitor policy. Um, there's been some confusion about that. And um, so we're, we're defining that in the um, guidebook and that will be included. Um, and the public will have the ability to give input on the, the guidebook before we finalize it. So. Um, it's just not, the second draft is not ready yet, um, and the subcommittee may need to meet again before we <coughs> make it available for the public to review. Um, there was a suggestion at a recent meeting that we have a, um, a system where there's a person in each group that acts as a liaison with staff, and I just want everyone to know that that has been in place long before I got here and that every group does have a liaison with staff already. Um, and so if you don't know who the liaison is in a group you're attending, um, you can ask us and we'll let you know who that is. Um, often I think people, um, they don't really know who to go to if they have a complaint about another peer or about something that's happening in their group. And we're here to help with anything that comes up in groups, but we also really want groups and the liaison to try and work those things out amongst themselves if possible, because we really don't want to have a top-down approach. We want this to be a community environment that everyone is adults, and if we, we all abide by the code of conduct, we should be able to get along. Um, um, there was a suggestion by um, a council member that we plan a retreat for the council. Um, I think that this is a good idea. We could do this maybe in the spring. Um, we would need to identify someone 
um, to use sort of as a facilitator for that. Um, and um, another, another complaint was that there's been a lack of consistency at reception, um, that people don't always know the answers to questions. Um, you know, we do have a lot of volunteers working at reception, and um, there's a lot of information that they um, either have to dig through to get answers to, or they may not um, have gotten updated. And we're working on trying to make sure that everyone is sort of up to date with the newest information. And we do have a monthly meeting that Jay meets with all volunteers that work at reception to to sort of talk about what's coming in the next month and what um, what might be new or have changed. Um, but we, we do appreciate, you know, if you let us know that you got misinformation or that someone wasn't able to answer a question because we keep a running tab sort of for receptionists to look at each time they come in, that's new things, sort of um, kind of updates for people to orient themselves to anything that maybe they haven't been told. Um, um, People have said, um, I guess on the council and also patrons have said that they'd like to have more um, warning about any changes that are happening. Um, I've been trying um, since I got here to <coughs> include um, anything that's coming or we're thinking about or that we're having focus groups about um, in my articles in the Chronicle. Um, we've also been putting things in constant contact in the emails so that people know that there's been a change or that we're going to be closed or um, and and I will of course bring these things up at the coffee hour um, that I do each month and we'll also be trying to include these things in the FAQ binder at the front desk um, a council member brought up that it might be good to work on getting some good PR um, and interviewing people who are um, actually um, feeling really good about some things at the center because I think that um, there are a lot of good things here and uh, happening here and there are a lot of people who are really happy about the things that are new here um, so it's not um, it's, you know we miss things we may miss things that have changed but there are also a lot of new things that people are really excited about so um, we'd like to get that feedback too and find out what, what people want more of. Um, so we may start featuring some of the clubs or volunteers in the Chronicle more often. Um, let's see. The, we, we're working on the guidelines, um, which will include the visitor policy. We're working on um, I haven't yet brought this to the to the guidelines committee, um, but I'm working on defining some standards of professionalism for our instructors and our volunteers so that we are more consistent in the way that we're providing services or information. Um, we we have a lot of instructors here, and we have sometimes we'll have someone come in and teach something one time, and sometimes they come and they want to teach all the time, and they stay for years. Um, and so um, we want to make sure everybody gets the same information about how we do things here so that there, there aren't um, miscommunications or confusion. Um, so in the guidebook, um, we, when we met, we discussed a lot of the things that are in there. And I, I basically used the template that another senior center has written um, because that really saves a lot of time not having to reinvent the wheel. And, um, you know, there are many, many senior centers that have guidebooks and all kinds of policies, and some of them are um, much, much more strict than, than we are here. Um, and, you know, it really um, depends on the place and the culture and the, the city, um, the city's needs. But um, we did include quite a few things that people have questions about, like um, where can we eat and drink in the building, cell phone use, uh, the code of conduct, um, uh, behavioral issues, mental health issues, guests, 
the temperature of a room, windows, the HVAC system, things like that. So we're trying to include everything that might have already been asked or may come up. Um, we're also working on a volunteer guidebook um, and working on trying to develop some trainings. And um, Jay's also going to be forming a um, volunteer, what are we calling it? A volunteer appreciation committee. Yeah. Um, so, because I think, um, you know, we do the volunteer recognition event one time, one time a year, but um, really we want to show our volunteers that we appreciate them more often and not just do it one time a year. Um, and and to also just have some regular trainings, I think. Um, and maybe even, um, I guess we're also talking about developing some more volunteer opportunities because um, we always need volunteers, but also I think that um, not everyone's interested in the volunteer positions that we actually have, so we, we think there are more opportunities we could develop. And I think that will fit nicely with um, the welcoming environment because I think that things, ideas will come up in that that maybe will also create some volunteer positions. Um, so, and the code of conduct, um, <coughs> along with the guidebook, there will be some changes in that where we will sort of spell out our steps for when there are issues where people may continue to behave in ways that are in violation of our code of conduct and how we deal with that so that people um, understand what that process is. Um, most senior centers have these kinds of things because um, in order for everyone to get along and for it to be a comfortable environment for people, people really need to know what the guidelines are. This is a public building and we deal we deal with a lot of different kinds of people, and um, sometimes, you know, we deal with people who um, just kind of end up in our building too, and maybe looking for a warm spot. Um, and so, we really need to have policies to point to and to discuss things with people. Um, it's not rules are often um, in society. I think rules are created as a way to to kind of help us have a guide to agree on, and it's not meant to necessarily be a punitive thing. It's really to define a framework that we all work with together. Um, the question and answer binder, um, I've added some things to that that we've discussed here and agreed on. Um, and as we continue to discuss those things, I'll add more. Um, the next topic was volunteers, and there were a few people in the council who, in response to things that came up with the public, um, suggested some things. Um, one was creating more opportunities for volunteering, clarifying expectations, creating standards of professionalism, um, perhaps having volunteers, a volunteer position be sort of an, ambas an ambassador position. Um, we do need people who can give a tour to a family or, or a senior um, and tell people about what we offer here. Um, I guess I kind of talked about this already, the appreciation. Um, we may need, I mean, we need about one or two many uh, council members to be involved in that and then we'll ask some patrons and volunteers to be involved in that. Um, let's see. We are, um, one of the things that we're going to be changing at reception soon um, is that City Council just voted in um, an approval of a, um, that we can take on a credit card merchant contract and start receiving uh, payments to credit cards. Um, and this will, I think, help expedite things at the front desk, but it will also be a new procedure that volunteers will have to learn. So, um, but I think that it will help cut down on the lines um, and um, 
Also, that will enable people to pay for things and register online from home. Um, transportation. Um, there were some questions about what are our plans and needs for this program. Um, so we are, um, it looks like we'll be getting the two new vehicles that we've been waiting for, one of which we've been waiting for since June. Um, in hopefully tomorrow, but if not tomorrow, the beginning of next week. Um, and we have a new um, coordinator, transportation coordinator, who started on the 30th. Um, and she's, you know, getting up to speed and um, we are continuing to provide services um, with the one van that we have right now. Um, the, two, the two vans that are now, uh, I don't know, um, out of commission are sitting on the DPUW lot um, and we will replace those with the two new vehicles. Um, and we're going to uh, we're going to launch the survey, the transportation survey that we were working on, um, pretty soon. But we're holding off just to give Sarah a little time to get acclimated. Um, and as I talked about before, I I, um, I also want to explore some more sustainable um, transportation options, including carpooling, um, because it. It's a big. It's a big part of our budget, the transportation system, and I think that um, we can probably do, with the help of Northampton neighbors and with the help of volunteers, uh, really provide a lot more transportation that would kill two birds with one stone. Really, because we don't have enough parking, and so anytime people can carpool here, it's a good idea. Um, so. Um, financial aid and subsidizing of meals and programs. That was a question that came up. Um, there were some concerns about how many programs uh, we're charging fees for here. Um, when I got here, we charged money for almost everything. <laughs> and I felt like, you know, we're a nonprofit. We need to realign what we're doing with our mission, which is to serve seniors and not make money off of them. Um, and so I started a financial aid fund and I started to redirect our energies um, rather than, you know, selling a lot of stuff like giving things away. When we get a donation of cards, we put them in the library and they are there to be taken for free. Um, and um, the, the meals the meals will stay at three dollars as long as we can manage that and we're trying to raise revenue through other ways um, in order to keep that program at that price point um, one of those ways that we're going to have a fundraiser is that young at heart is going to give us a free concert on February 13th um, and there'll be a special lunch in that day too so um, that will help bring in some money to support the program um, I also wanted to report that we have, I counted them up, um, some programs that are daily, some that are weekly, some that are monthly, and some that are multiple times a year. We have over 50 programs that are free here. Um, we're always trying to add more, but um, there are lots and lots of programs that people can come to if they can't afford a fee-based program. And then as we build our financial aid program, um, Fund, we should be able to provide more scholarship money so that people can go to fee-based programs with that money as well. Right now, the financial aid fund um, is really just supporting, through the wellness grant, $15 a month for 20 seniors a year um, towards a health clinic, a farm share, or a fitness class or membership. Um, and as we build that, we will expand that to programming, other programming. Um, did you check this number? Did that come up to you? Um, I, I counted it this morning. There, there were about 50. So we launched the finished punch card system as of January 2nd. And um, the first week we sold 45 cards. 
Um, so clearly we can tell, this is a three month pilot, but we can tell within the first week that people um, were excited about the flexibility that that provides. Um, they can go to any Y class with their punch card. They don't have to just register for one class. They can go to any class. If they can't get to the morning one, they can go to any of the others. Um, I put out an um, invitation for bids for a contract for, for fitness uh, classes, and the Y will bid on it, but other people are available to bid, and I, um, so far, I've, gotten a couple of requests from across the United States because it went out nationally. Um, and so um, that that um, invitation for bid includes um, not just teaching fitness classes that are specifically designed for seniors. Um, it includes education, nutritional counseling, um, and small and individual group uh, personal training. So we have a lot more things coming on once we get that bid in place, um, which I'm really excited about because um, my goal all along has been to provide the highest level of service that we can for seniors and to have instructors that are current and up to date with the training that is available now. And it's, it's um, it, I want it to be, better than what you can get at the Y. <laughs> so um, I, I, uh, I think that people will be very happy and we'll see how the punch card goes over the three months. Um, and uh, if there are glitches with it or if people don't like something about it, we'll, we'll look at that and make changes. Um, the, the main thing about that is that it needs to be fiscally sustainable. So we, we will have to assess how that goes. Um, what, what I'm hoping is that a lot more people start to join and take those classes and that we won't have to worry about that. Um, we are creating a new instructor packet for our sole contractors who are not Y instructors um, and updating their certification and CPR um, their, um, and that they will, they will start to be required to have a, a training once a year that um, keeps them in line with our standards of professionalism so that every instructor here is on the same page with our policies about customer service. Um, so we're hoping to meet with all of our instructors soon. Um, the next coffee with the director is on the 16th um, where and I will provide updates and um, including stuff I'm talking about today for people who weren't able to be here um, on the solutions we're coming up with um, to the concerns. And um, I think it is a Thursday. <coughs> we're trying to, I'm trying to do a different day each month so that people who can't come up, um, on mm -hmm. one of those days could come to one of them. I think it was misprinted in the Chronicle as Wednesday the 16th. So it's Thursday the 16th. Yeah. Um, excuse me. Um, so let's see. Um, on December 12th, there were questions about transportation, children, and non senior guests, the fitness program, and budget um, information. And there were 13 people at that coffee hour. Um, um, and let's see. From the 18th, there was. Um, Someone brought up that we need the, a new POW flag, which I have on my desk right now. Um, I would have had it sooner, but I had to track down the <coughs> veterans director. Um, <laughs> um, he's a busy guy. Um, we talked about the lunches, the policies, the pitch club, diversity, communication, transportation, the Y programs, communication. Um, and what makes this a happy place. Um, so we, we are working steadily on looking uh, on all the feedback and complaints we've gotten. Um, and I think that the guidelines booklet will address um, most of these things and then the focus groups will um, take that further and allow people to be part of those discussions. Um, I wanted to let people know that the Arts and Culture Committee is picking out documentaries now 
to be shown monthly in the computer room. Um, the program coordinator is working on, I'm now in my regular report, but it may address issues that people are wanting to hear about. Um, the programs coordinator is working with UMass and Smith College to bring in um, college students to help with programming here once a month. Um, so you may see college students here, and um, I think this happened in December or November. Uh, I think it was college basketball. Oh, UMass basketball players came and helped um, with brown bag and serving lunch. Um, so, um, and I think that people really enjoyed kind of getting to know some of these young people. Um, Big Y will be providing a nutrition workshop this spring. We're starting Spanish 1 and Spanish 2 classes in February. There'll be a French class starting soon. Um, we have a new foot nurse starting in February um, that's lower cost than the previous foot nurses that were here. Um, our program coordinator is starting a um, four weeks in February um, coffee, I mean hot chocolate and a chat about programming. So if you have ideas or questions or you just want to learn more about a program that's being offered um, before you check it out, um, you can come and sit with the program coordinator and have cocoa. Um, we have authors of the month booked for the next several months. We, we often have a hard time finding authors. They kind of sometimes just drop in our lap. Um, but it would be great to have part of the Arts and Culture Committee if we had people who wanted to, um, to join and take that piece on to coordinate authors. Um, that would be wonderful because it's, it's definitely something that takes up some time that we just haven't had the time to do. Um, starting this month on the 23rd, Northampton Neighbors will be holding a city circle here. I don't know if people know about their Northampton uh, neighbor uh, neighbors circles, but each neighborhood has a social circle that meets, um, and this will be a city circle. So if you know we don't always like our neighbors, like uh, maybe we we don't want to go to the one in our neighborhood, but this is one where people in the city can come and get to know other people from the city. So that will be, or maybe people in their neighborhood, they know everybody, but they want to meet more people. So <laughs> um, I'm excited about that happening here. Um, so that'll be monthly going forward. Um, we've started preparing for the health and safety fair, which is in May, and that takes a lot of work. Um, and I don't know if people have noticed, but um, out in other kinds of publications, um, uh, the Gazette, through our contract with them for marketing, they are putting out ads for us and um, other kinds of digital ads as well so that we can let people know about what we're doing here. Um, we are researching a large digital screen for the lobby, which I'm hoping may have a touch, a touch feature that you can touch on something and it further information will pop up so that um, we, we are handing out you know, the information on paper, but sometimes it's nice to not have to take the paper or um, to be able to just get that information when you need it. Um, we are working still with architects on the um, capital improvement project for addressing the lobby and upgrades in the lobby. Um, the carpeting is, you know, 13 years old now or 12 years old now, and um, so we're just looking at what we could do um, within whatever budget we end up getting um, to improve that. But also, um, I'm asking them to look at how to improve the acoustics because with the vaulted ceiling and the skylight, I don't. The um, noise gets amplified quite a bit, um, and so it can be hard for people who have a hard time hearing. It's hard for me to hear uh, myself when someone's talking next to me because it gets amplified out into the room. Um, 
So we were talking about different ways we could address that. Um, when the architects come back with their designs, um, um, and we've gotten more to a stage where we want to start to pull people in for comments, we'll let you know and, and see if we can um, <coughs> kind of come to a consensus on these things. Oh, um, I did put in last year for um, new toilets and the bathrooms because they're really low and um, they're really not designed for seniors. And so um, we should be getting new toilets that are higher. Um, it was either that or put in our, you know, um, bars. And I just think, you know, um, they should have put in the right toilets in the first place. So, um, um, and um, I wanted to introduce Laura Scott, who's our new department assistant. Um, um, Sarah's out there, but you'll meet her if you come by, um, the transportation coordinator. Um, we just got a $4,000 grant from AARP to do an assessment of the city's um, age friendliness and dementia friendliness, and that will be part of um, probably I'm hoping the planning department will take that on and um, kind of do an assessment of all the assessments that have been done um, because a lot of the a lot of the data and, and um, information has has been collected already in a lot of ways like the housing department did their own assessment so we can really draw a lot of information from those assessments um, and then we will do a citywide survey um, we also got a $4,000 grant from MCOA to run a six-week workshop called Live Your Best Life, which is um, a program um, on building resiliency and uh, so that seniors who may be experiencing a major life change or retirement or the death of a, of a spouse or a health issue um, that they learn tools to manage the stressors that might come up with those things um, and um, you know sort of builds skills but also tools and new learn new information about um, basic brain health and how to how to um, do self-care when you're under tremendous strain um, and we'll have a lot of guest speakers coming for that series as well um, I've been meeting with the VNA and Cooley Dick um, around trying to expand medical services here. So we will, um, it looks like we will be having the only geriatrician in the area um, at the time, at this time, I think Rebecca Starr, um, come in and have some regular office hours here, um, as well as potentially um, a nurse as well. So. Um, and that would happen in the wellness center. Um, we're talking about starting a memory ca cafe and also a death cafe. Um, if you don't know what those things are, um, memory cafes are for um, people to get together to, to learn about brain health and to practice um, ways of keeping their brain active. And Actually, that's really, memory cafes are Cafes, they're social get-togethers for people with dementia, and it's based, it's not to focus on their dementia, but it's to focus on um, just socialization, because many people with dementia are stigmatized, so they can come together and have a time where they're, the main point is with their dementia, and um, so that's what a memory cafe is. Great. Yeah, so caregivers mm -hmm. will um, get support as well. Yeah, the caregivers. And, yes. And um, UMass nursing students um, will be coming back in January. Um, they come every year and they do sort of mini workshops and informational sessions. Um, they usually start out with a survey asking for what people are interested in learning about. Um, and they're usually here for about six weeks. So um, we'll be advertising that. Um, so you should, you should hear about that ahead of time and you can plan you want to come to some specific ones. Um, in December, um, our social worker and program coordinator worked with Triad to um, bring a, lot of, a bunch of homebound seniors some uh, blankets and other resources in the community. I think there were about 25 people who received these 
bags of resources and um, we are just to sort of um, let people know we are working actively with triad all the time we meet with them monthly and the district attorney's office um, and a lot of our programs on senior safety um, and scams and things like that are provided by the district attorney's office um, the earn job readiness workshop um, is happening monthly and um, we are in the midst right now of developing a website for earn so that people who are 50 plus looking for work um, have um, a resource that is geared towards them and um, also we'll have some pages on it for businesses to learn about how to be an age friendly employer um, and that is sort of a across you know it's a cross pollination between the age friendly work we're doing and the earn work the earn uh, initiative so that um we're working on both um making the community more age friendly and the businesses more age friendly but also talking about this to businesses about creating more jobs for seniors um let's see okay Later this winter, we're hoping to um, launch some program evaluations. So Nancy's gonna be doing these meetings in February to talk about programming, and then we're going to hopefully put out um, some evaluations that people can fill out about what they like about our programming, what they miss about programming, or what they would like to see changed about our programming. Um, some of our programming may, may be out of date. It may, may not fit the people who are coming here anymore. It might be for people who don't come here anymore. And we've just continued it. You know, um, we want to know how things are going in those programs. We want to know if there's programming that we're not offering that you really want. So um, I think I think that's everything I have for now. So I'd like to thank you, Maria. I hope that people are really play, paying close attention to their, I started about halfway through what you're saying, but there are at least 20 new initiatives and incredible things that are going on here. Over 50 free programs, meals for $3, a foot nurse at a lower cost. Those are just some of the things, and I'm, I'm hoping that people understand that. And I'd like to open it to the council members who might need a little more clarification on um, some of the areas that she spoke about. Anybody? Jane? I wondered about what we've talked about raising money for to subsidize uh, programs for people, you know, for instance, for the uh, uh, French cards and, and poor, and I know that we've done the live sale in order for the lunches, but I still don't have an idea about how, like, where we, how much we fall short by, you know, um, like what, if we, I, I didn't know if we have a goal that, like, that, we, that we need to, um, to reach, kind of, you know, um, for, for the lunches or for something else? Well, I wonder, you know, I know that if you had a, a, a ballpark idea for each, um, in order to make the program sustainable, you know. For, for what, lunches for and what else? For each. For okay. each thing, for what yeah. is, uh, yeah. oh, you know, so the financial aid? Yeah, because, okay. you know, because I, I know that we've, you know, we're talking about doing fundraising, and with fundraising a lot of times it's more effective if you have an idea about how much you want yeah. to get um, yeah. before you know when you, when you set up so that's what i was asking right well i mean right now the city is funding our chef's salary minus five thousand so we have to raise five thousand to support having a chef uh -huh. um the three dollars kevin is he is designing his meals around that budget so um I think it probably goes over a little bit and so then we are we were hoping that people buying the seven dollar meals the non-seniors um that that would help to support the program but we're not getting in, enough like me buying my lunch is just not enough 
<laughs> so, but it does help me to eat lunch. Um, so, um, but you know, I think we could do more marketing to get more people coming. Um, you know, there's some businesses around here who, in the beginning, did come and get lunch for their staff, things like that. Um, but um, I just don't want to. Yeah, I I think right now we're not over budget in terms of keeping a three dollar meal. It's really just trying to sustain it. It's just because right now we're about halfway through the, the budget, right? I mean, yes. So. So it seemed like, I just thought it might be a good time. Yeah, to I'm not as worried. That, yeah, you know, I'm um, not as worried about that one. No. I mean, we did add more product okay. in the coffee shop, and that helps bring in revenue also for that program. Um, I I think that based on the wellness grant, like it got started a little bit slow. People didn't know about it as much as you know they do now. Um, I think we've filled all 20 spots now, so I think now I'll go, when that money is all used up, I'll go to city council and I'll ask for 30 or 40 slots. Um, but I, I think that um, my ideal in the future is that we can do like the Y does or other places do where people get screened once, when once a year financially they get set at that bracket that fits their income and then everything that they pay for to attend here is set at their rate uh, because then they don't have to self-identify right. every time they apply. Um, no, I really applaud you for that. I think that's, that's kind of independent. Really yeah, and I think we want, we want to meet people where they are and sometimes our situations change, you know, I mean, uh, I, so, and especially um, when people are on fixed income, they may not fall into the bracket where they qualify for SNAP or fuel assistance, but they still may be counting their pennies because they have to buy medication and they have to, you know, they have to cover costs that they don't fall in low enough. Right. And, but they still, they should still be able to afford to attend a fitness class. Um, so I want us to raise, I mean, I don't have a, a dollar amount in my head because I, we, we're not putting people on a wait list yet. But, but I do think that if we were to implement that, you know, we'd need a, a $50,000 over a certain number of years. Um, Can I ask one yeah. other fiscal question? It was just the, um, with the transportation, I know you said that, it, that that takes a big chunk out of the budget. Um, it's a big part of our budget. Yeah. The city is, yeah. So, um, is that is do we? So, how would like about how much of the budget of, of the operating budget do you think it is, and like is is that not sufficient? Um, no, it 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 is. The mayor is willing to, um, you know, retain that in the budget. It's just that. I think there are more needs that we can meet, and I think that we can meet the needs better. We just need to assess how we're delivering those services, and we need to um, we need to not be driving the van around with just one person on it at a time. We need to make sure that we're sort of streamlining services so that we we're um, using you know the van is full for a certain need at each time it's being used and. Then, we're doing on demand pretty much right now, and it, it really is not sustainable. Um, and so I will, you know, I'll be looking for more grant funding, and um, I will s try to start the carpooling uh, program that I had in Williamsburg, which was very successful, was very um, self-sustaining in terms of the drivers. Really, um, but there wasn't a lot of dispatch that we had to do because the drivers were. Um, basically calling people and inviting them to go on outings and and so they were doing the dispatch for us and people could s say yes or no and um, and it felt the social networks that then were also self-sustaining so um, that's really I'd like to really add that in because um, I don't think we're getting a parking garage anytime soon <laughs> and um, I think um, 
it's it's better for people. They don't have to then ask for a ride, and they don't have to go on the van if they don't want to. And um, it, it'll just be better all around. Um, and that's really what the state and all the funders want to see too. <laughs> so, Dennis, I just wanted to piggyback on what you were saying about the meals. Um, I'm glad that um, we we're able to keep that three dollars. Um, you know, you're able to uh, raise the rest of the cabin's salary. But I guess my question would be, do we have any data or feedback on some people who may only be on Social Security and they come for lunch three times a week, they don't have $9? Is so there part of the financial aid towards people who actually yeah, I think three dollars is eat for free as well, or is it sustainable? Or so, do you have any yeah. sense of that? So, I mean, there there is like some complicated pieces to this, which is um, so we can't we can't become a program that takes commodities and get subsidized by the state because um, that was one of the contingencies upon. Uh, the land lease with the housing authority for this building. So we are not allowed to have a subsidized meal program. Um, but we can, um, uh, yeah, so, and so like Highland Valley's meals are at South yeah, House yeah. and that is a whole subsidized meal program. And, and people who can't afford $3 here can pay a quarter there or can pay nothing there if they want to. But, um, um, but yes, I would I would love to be able to have sort of a sliding scale, and I think there may be ways to do that here too, because I know that three dollars is is a lot for for someone, especially if they want to do it um, more often. Because I, I a lot of seniors also don't like most of us don't feel like cooking for one every single day. Right. It's nice to be able to go out, um, and it's social, so. So the three dollars seems to be cover most people. Just real need the other yeah. resources that are available. Yeah, I mean we're we're working on trying to put together sort of a sponsor package too, so that local businesses or um, you know organizations could sponsor certain things here, and that would help subsidize some things. Um, and we do, you know, we do have a lot of organizations that do those things. Um, so, um, but yeah, we're, we're thinking about all these kinds of things um, and um, ways to make things accessible. So, I mean, we could bump it up to five and give a discount to people who can't afford that. But, you know, I like to think, like in Williamsburg, we had a $3 meal for seven years and people who could afford more gave more. Mm -hmm. People who needed it to be you know, they said, I know this meal costs more than $3 to make, so here's what I think it really costs, and I have the money to give, so I will, because it helps pay for someone else. Right. <coughs> and it's, you know, sort of a um, give what you can yeah. kind of thing. So, and, and we do we do get that occasionally. Folks do give us tips. Here's $5. Yep, here's yep. and it goes, it goes right back into the program. It goes back into the program. Great. Great. Yeah. People you. are really good at the coffee shop. We have a lot of tips. Okay, anybody else? Okay, so um, let's go on to the new business, which is the guidelines subcommittee update. Um, well, so we met, and um, like I said before, that we we discussed um, the contents and some some changes, and looked at different policies from other centers, and kind of picked from, from those things of what we want to put in. But I do think that um, once I make the changes and send it back, then the subcommittee can um, decide whether they feel like we need to meet again before we finalize the draft or whether it's ready to go. And then we can um, have copies at the front desk for patrons to give input. Um, and. Um, and then hopefully finalize it before spring. So, great. Thank you. And Jay? Yep. Assistant Director's Report? Yep. So, I was going to just uh, feedback on to what Marie was saying about a couple of things. One is uh, putting together a couple of different groups. One is sort of 
more like a workshop group for developing more ideas for volunteer recognition. Um, um, rather than, I mean, there's recognition that happens systemically throughout the day or throughout the week, but something that is more visible so that more people will understand that they're being recognized. Um, and one of the things that, you know, I'm going to tip my hat here because one of our receptionist volunteers is sitting right over there. Um, we're having a meeting next week and we're going to be having uh, sort of like a little contest where there's going to be some prizes given out. And that's sort of a way of recognizing um, their contribution. And, um, but I want a lot more ideas so that we can, you know, have a sustainable program going forward. Um, and I'll be putting together that working group um, shortly. The other is a focus group about um, a focus group, a cross section of people from volunteers, staff, um, patrons, um, council members perhaps, about what it means to be a welcoming environment or to, or to have a welcoming environment and how to um, address this challenge and um, and then, depending on what comes out of that, probably some workshops on um, maybe making some changes and implementing the suggestions. So those are the two things that I'm going to be working on. I'm starting to uh, put those groups together now. So be on the lookout for more information. Thank you, Jane. Yeah. So it looks like we're wrapping up. Anything else from? We just, have, we just have one thing. Um, uh, Northampton Community TV um, is the one who puts things up on TV. Uh, there was someone who had mentioned something. Um, the council the senior center doesn't have any control over Northampton Community TV. It's their cameras. They come up and pick up the tape and put it on the website. So if there's any delay, it's not due to the council or the senior center. It's up to them to come put it up and they often don't uh, um, have cameras for sub a lot of subcommittees for the city they do like major um, city council or something else. so i just wanted to put that out as a clarification all right so does anybody like to make a motion to adjourn so everybody wants to stay here. <laughs> Second. Second. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay, it passes. Thank you, everyone.